Hi, hello, welcome back. Let us discuss an interesting case of uh, elderly male who presented with visual loss. Uh, an MRI brain was ordered to evaluate the cause of his vision loss. These are the upper row images which are diffusion weighted, the lower row images, T2 weighted images. What are your findings? Please write down your findings. The visual loss was on left side. Okay. Subsequent contrast images, lower low showing the SPGR post contrast images and this is top images. These are the top images. What are your findings? Okay. Let me discuss the case for you. So this is a case where you are able to see a suspicious mass at the skull base and fossa of Rosenmuller. These are the images where you are appreciating a suspicious mass which is showing diffusion restriction. The, this second image, titivated image is showing the mass very well here. Uh, this is the mass you are able to identify. And a lesion is also seen at the cavernous sinus and also indenting on the temporal lobe. You can see temporal lobe edema in this image. If you carefully see, there is edema in the masticator space and infratemporal fossa. There is also bilateral mastitis, sinusitis. So there is a mass in the nasopharyngeal region which is involving the skull base and also cavernous sinus. Subsequently, there was temporal lobe invasion. There is bilateral mastitis. At this point, what do you want to think of? And uh, if you see carefully, uh, this is a continuous process. Like it was involving the uh, pharyngeal region and also it is a continuous process which you are able to appreciate. In contrast also, you see from the nasopharynx, there is direct spread of the lesion into the cranium. The game changing sequence was the coronal weighted contrast images where you can see the mass at the fossa of Rosenmuller which is actually contiguous with the mass in the cavernous sinus. So when you see such a contiguous involvement, first thing you have to think is in an elderly male, probably this is a case of nasopharyngeal carcinoma which is spreading through the perineural spread in through foramina into the cavernous sinus. Here in this case, the there is no obvious narrowing of the carotids. So, this is a clear cut case of nasopharyngeal carcinoma which is spread into the cavernous sinus through a perineural spread. So perineural spreads are common with minor cerebral gland tumors. They are common with parotid carcinomas. Head, most many head and neck carcinomas spread through skull base foramina. As a radiologist, you should always have a look at skull base foramina before diagnosing the uh, anything like if you see a mass in the head and neck region in elderly male and you should always look at the basal cuts to come to a conclusion whether it's a contiguous mass or is it a separate mass. Without the, this fossa of Rosenmuller mass, we would have called it as a schwannoma or a meningioma in the given case. So definitely looking at the mass was very important. This case was purely referred for brain for us. Sub subsequently, we could go back and check for the head and neck region and we could find the mass. So I already told the uh, lo local invasion can occur and also perineural spread also happens. The Whenever you are seeing perineural spread, what is very important is uh, the function of the nerve area which is the normal function. For example, if the facial nerve is involved, the patient will have Bell's palsy. Similarly, when the maxillary nerve or a mandibular nerve is involved, it will, uh, the uh, muscle supply to that will get denervated and they show the changes of denervation. 
so those things should be carefully looked upon so these are the uh, important points as a radiologist you should see ct will add up to look at the skull based destruction and the foramenal widening definitely and also in mri you can see the lymphadenopathy which will conclude further to give you the diagnosis of that so in conclusion always in elderly male for a cavernous sinus mass or any skull based mass or any mass which is seen around the foramen you always look for the perineural spread of the tumors thank you very much hope this video on uh, perineural spread of tumors of skull base and uh, head and neck region was useful for you thank you